Hello people of the web and YouTube, the gear, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to data mosh. So okay guys, to actually data mosh it's fairly simple and it can practically be done with no software at all just by using a simple hex editor, however I'm not going to be showing you guys how to do that method today for today's video considering I don't make, get many good results that way, however what I will be showing you guys is how to actually remove the iframes in a video as well as how to, how to add the P frames in a video. Now to do this, it's fairly simple, in fact you can actually just do everything we're about to show, I'm about to show you guys today in a vidmux well creator however there are some pros and cons to using this program to do all that because it typically tends to crash once you start adding too much to a project so I tend to stick away from this program when I can however what this program is good for is adding p frames which I, which I will be showing you guys how to do by the end of this video however for now I'm gonna be showing you how to delete the iframes in a video in the program called data Mosh studio so let's get to this first of all to actually delete your iframes in your videos you have to open data Mosh studio up and then import your video once the videos are imported they will show up here on the right in the little file viewer now in my case i got the clips vhs stairs and dragon for no particular reason other than they mix and mash together really good however you have to select a clip and play it once you play it, you're going to notice a few things. You're going to notice the counter here in the bottom right count up. This is where the, your, what frame you're on. In my case, I'm on frame 38 right now. However, if I were to rewind, I'd be back on frame 0. So basically what we're going to do is go over here to the right, hit the V to select our starting frame. In my case, is frame 0. Then I'm going to move the scrubber for where I want the video to end and in my case I want it to end around frame 58 or so because I just want that VHS DVD shot. So basically I move the scrubber to where I want it to end then I click the V over here for ending frame. Now if you don't want to click the V's you can just type the number in it's the same number that shows up there and there but basically we're done. All you got to do from here is hit delete iframes make sure it's unchecked and then hit insert basically what we did is we added this one little clip right here to here 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 down below into our timeline basically you want to start off your timeline with a clip with all its iframes intact because if you don't keep the iframes intact for one clip then you can't successfully delete the iframes and data mosh into the next clip so to say so basically once we got our intact video in the timeline you'd want to go over to beginning iframe and select that clip in my case it is the file called VHS so I'm gonna select VHS now from here you basically actually start data moshing it's basically the same steps I just showed you instead of actually unchecking delete iframes you want to have that now checked so basically I'm gonna select the stairs clip that will begin to play I'm just gonna select where I want the clip to begin and end and in my case I want it to begin right around here and maybe end right around there now I'm gonna click delete iframes and then hit insert as you can see the clip will be added down below here into the timeline and from there we're pretty much done it's basically just repeating the same steps that we did for adding the second clip for the third clip which I will quickly do just to demonstrate basically we just select our beginning frame then our ending frame and then delete iframes then insert and that's it like I said we're pretty much done we could just click export export the video and then click play now if you don't want to remember that if you don't want to hit the button I should say you can just hit control O and control P to play the video but yeah, as you can see, it indeed worked. I didn't get quite as good a result as I did the last time. However, it is still a data mosh and it did turn out kind of the way I wanted it to. As you can see, we go from this clip to this clip, right to this clip. However, if you want a perfect data mosh, I really recommend a video clip with a lot of movement. What I should have done was I should have started with the slow one then ended with this clip here which you can easily do by the way you can easily move these clips around in the timeline just know that you have to uncheck the delete iframes here in the edit tab and then go to whatever clip is first and then 
hit uncheck the delete iframes and hit save. So basically what we're doing here is flip flopping these. So I just flip flop them around then go to beginning iframe and select stairs. And stairs is now the beginning clip with its iframes intact. And then we quickly export that and play it. And as you can see, the clips have been moved around and this will probably look a lot better, hopefully. Uh, a little bit better. Anyway, that's iframe removal, and that's basically it for this program. However, there is a flaw with this program. We cannot add P frames as it stands right now, as far as I'm aware. So to actually add P frames into P frame data mosh, you're going to need Avid Mux, and in my case, I'm using Avid Mux 2.5. However, depending on what version of Avid Mux you got, this may work out really good for you or it may not at all. So I really recommend just getting the version I have for this tutorial. And with that said, let us get to this. First of all, to actually begin, we have to open our clip. So I'm going to quickly just click the little folder here and open the clip for us. Now in my case, I'm going to use the dragon clip again, just because it seems to work out the best for whenever I do a P-frame modification. And basically, once you import your video, you're going to see this prompt, just hit no on everything. Basically, what the program's trying to tell you when you open your clip is that, hey, it needs to be converted in order to work. However, we don't want that to happen because we're going to be converting the video right now. And we're essentially just going to be breaking the video apart and separating out the iframes just to make the P-frame addition more easier and simple on us. So basically, you want to go to video, change it from copy to xvid, and hit configure. Now when you're in configure, you just got to hit frame, go down to minimum iframes, and just hit 9 and hold it down till that whole box is filled. Basically from here, we're done, but we do need to save the clip again and reopen it. So I'm just going to quickly do that, guys, and I'll meet up with you once I saved it. So okay, I actually renamed the file reopen as to not confuse you guys and I'm going to save it right now and it's going to take a minute or two since this is a 30 second file but what we really did just now is we separated all the iframes as far as I'm aware this is how this works just to keep the P frames and the B frames intact. That way when we reopen this file after it's done exporting we can then add our P frames into the mix. Now, just know this, I'm not good at P-frame manipulation. Um, there are much better examples out there. I'll probably flash them up on screen if I don't get a good result by the end of this. But basically, P-frame manipulation is like a sketchbook if you got the one frame stuck throughout the whole flipbook animation, so to say. You will see what I mean as we get to it. But yeah, for now, I'm going to close out of this video. Just file close. Now I'm going to hit the little open folder again and navigate back to that video. Okay, now that I got the video here, I'm just gonna open it and it should open up without a prompt at all this time, meaning that we successfully converted it. Now, however, this program, when you actually begin to add P frames, just know this, depending on your system, this program will crash a lot on you. So I really recommend doing this on a somewhat decent machine if you plan to do P frame data moshing. But yeah, with that said, we want to go back to video, hit copy, just to turn it off the XVID presets. We no longer need it. And from here, we basically just go down to the timeline. And if I were to scrub through this or use the arrow keys, you will see P frame, B frame, P frame, B frame, then so forth, all the way up till we get to the eventual iframe, I believe. Yeah, iframe. So basically we separated the iframes a lot, that way we can get to the P and B frames in order to duplicate them. So basically to duplicate a P frame, all we gotta do is navigate to the first P frame. I'm gonna navigate a little bit farther actually. So right around here, I'm gonna navigate to the first P frame that I wanna begin at. Then I'm gonna go back once by hitting the left arrow, so I'll be on a B frame. And from here I'm gonna hit A, go forward with the right arrow twice, so one, two, and then hit B. As you can see, we have selected our P frame. So once we got it selected, you just hit Control, then C, and we copy it. And from here, you just hit the right arrow till you're on a B frame again, then Control V. And then you repeat this as much as you like until you get a desired result that you like. 
Just know this though, once you're done, you won't actually be able to view the project in the viewer itself and in most cases if you try to view it this program will actually crash on you i have it i've had it happen once or twice before while trying to record this video and it indeed does suck but yeah once you got the actual p frames added to save our video and or to preview what we got we basically go up here to the little save icon and hit it and then we save our file wherever we wherever we want in my case i'm going to call it p frames since that's what we really did we added p frames to it now i'm gonna hit save and hit no not that we have to hit no on there you could actually hit yes the smart copy and you should be fine but yeah we're pretty much done i'm gonna go back to that folder and open our clip up and as you can see it's not a standard video file now which means we're gonna need to convert it in a converter or something or play it in a player that can play the file and in my case I'm gonna play it with VLC media player so give me a second to open that and we will do that so okay now that VLC is actually opened up I'm gonna drag our P frame clip over and into the viewer and as you can see the P frame manipulation was successful Basically, this effect is like sticking, try to think of an old flipbook animation. Basically, instead of transferring to the next image, the previous image gets stuck on top of the next image and so forth. This effect can, can be really crazy at times and you can get it left with a lot of wacky gifs if you were to do this on some short second clips of people smiling. But yeah, with that said guys, that's it for today's video. That was P-frame manipulation and I-frame manipulation. But just as a bonus, before I go, I'm actually going to show you guys how to do the same I-frame manipulation trick in um, a Vidmux. Basically, it's the same steps as we did for P-frame manipulation or addition, except we're going to the next I-frame, not our first I-frame. Remember, we have to keep the first one intact. And in this case, we're going to go over to our next iframe. And since this one's all separated out now, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. So we just basically go over to our next iframe, go to the frame before it, hit A, go next, skip past the iframe, then go to the next frame and hit B. Then you basically hit delete and you repeat that process until you get a satisfying result. Anyway, like I said, that's it now. We're done. That's how you do iframe manipulation and p-frame manipulation in two separate programs. Anyway, I hope this video was able to help you out. And if you make anything cool following my guide, post it down below in the comments because I'd love to see what you guys make. But yeah, with that said, guys, I'm going to leave this off here. DTPK signing off. Peace. Uh, exploit is really fickle, you have to make sure your file size is relatively small.